All right, now we've started recording. Thanks, guys. Perfect. All right. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. So, what a dynamic and unprecedented time mm -hmm. we have been called uh, to parent in this world. And I think that's where we'll start today is just honoring and acknowledging that these continue to be incredibly unprecedented times where there is not a script on the right way to parent in the middle of these types of novel adversities. And I'd like to just point out some of the struggles and challenges I am noticing, which are particularly unique to what's happening right now and how parents are responding. One of the first things that I've noticed is that parents are really struggling with a lot of their own guilt. So a lot of their own fears and guilt of their child missing out, of their child being deprived of opportunities that they wish that their child would have or that they were able to have. And so here we kind of notice our kids can't go to school and be in person with their friends regularly. They have to wear masks. They have to stay six feet away. They maybe missed out on a prom or a graduation that they're not going on family vacations or perhaps Thanksgiving won't be the same as it was every year. And as parents, that deeply, deeply hurts us because what we want more than anything is to create just an abundance of joy and connectivity in our children's lives. And we're vulnerable by things like COVID, by air quality, by all of these unprecedented challenges. We as parents are limited in our ability to deliver to our child in the way that we're used to or in the way that we'd like to. So what I've begun to notice is some parents, myself included, have over-rotated or over-compromised out of a sense of guilt. And what that means is when we got into parenthood, we were relatively clear about our family values. We had certain ideals that we really wanted to instill in our children. And we had certain things that we would say to our partner, oh, we'll never be the parents who X, Y, and Z, or our home will never X, Y, and Z. And as the epidemic has come along and life has been turned upside down, more and more we are giving into those never would I or my child won't be exposed to. Um, and I hear lots of different narratives around it. Maybe it's, I never thought that I'd be the parent who would let my kiddo play hours of video games, but but it's really their only way of socially connecting with their friends. I swore we would never have Fortnite in the house, but all of their friends are on it and they're so lonely and they're so isolated. I said I wouldn't do social media. I, you know, we really decided that, that social media was not for our family and now we've allowed these accounts. And so we see parents really kind of bending and flexing because they're coming from a place of love and they want to make up for something that their child is missing out on. However, unfortunately, when we stray from the foundation of the seeds that we have planted in our parenting garden, inevitably, weeds will rise. And the longer those weeds continue to manifest, the more difficult it is to then pull those weeds from that garden to create space for those seeds that we want to cultivate into full bloom. And so what I mean is, let's say that as time's gone by and our kiddos have been home and all of a sudden, you know, the second week of swim team or soccer practice is being canceled, now not because of COVID, but now because of air quality and we find ourselves, well, you can watch that PG-13 movie or you can spend an extra few hours on the gaming device. 
when we decide, when we start seeing the disruptive consequences of that. And those disruptive consequences really vary from family to family. Some parents will talk about their child being angry or agitated, just lashing out after they've had a lot of electronic use. Um, other parents will talk about their child being more withdrawn or disengaged and less interested in going for that family bike ride or being open to cooking a meal with dad. And then when we notice, gosh, like this is not moving in the direction it needs to be moving in and we try to intervene, we come up against a significant amount of resistance because it's hard to give up something that satiates you in an unhealthy way, right? How many of us have, you know, really just, turn to a bowl of ice cream <laughs> after after a rough day just something to emotionally satiate us and when we try to break these patterns and start engaging in i mean a day will come inevitably a day will come where our kids are back in school and they are interacting with one another and sports are into the full swing of things. And we have to have kids that are ready to make that transition back. Um, so it's really, really important to stick to those values now. And a lot of parents will ask, well, how do we do that when we're both working full time or when you know we've got four kids all trying to do distance Zoom? And there's lots and lots of different ways to get creative and it's not easy, but it is a challenge that is worthwhile. So I want you all to really pause and think about what are our foundational family values. And in this time of struggle and adversity, is there a way that as a parent, I over-rotated and allowed those to be sacrificed out of my own sense of guilt um, that comes from really, truly, deeply a place of love for your child. And if that is the case, think then the family values as opposed to stray from them. You know, the second piece is that we really want to think about some of the benefits of this time. And that's a challenging thing. I think we can be very sensitive, especially those of us who are in tune with our children, to their pain their loss, their boredom, their disconnect. So it's very easy for us to feel sad or frustrated about everything that they're missing out on. And sometimes we inadvertently kind of project that narrative onto them. So we might have worked tirelessly to create a beautiful schedule where their you know, social needs were met and their academic needs were met and their physical needs were met and it was so beautifully balanced and then it all got turned upside down and thrown out the window. And so we may be sending this message to our kiddos of, what a hard time, I can't believe this got canceled. Ugh you know, virtual schooling is just the worst. It's so hard learning through a screen or whatever our narrative might be. It's easy to highlight and emphasis the things that we're missing out on. But what's really powerful and what I truly believe is that we also have an opportunity to highlight the strengths that can come with this time. And what I mean by that is, I believe that these children, through being exposed to adversity and challenge, have had to learn how to adapt and how to be flexible and how to show resilience. And my goodness, if we keep pointing that out to them, this is really incredible. School was in person, and then it was virtual, and now it might be hybrid, and you are just rolling with it. You are learning to be somebody in this world who can be flexible and who can do well regardless of what is thrown their way. Our children have the potential to be a generation of human beings that can really adapt, that can show up to whatever is being asked for of them and show up with grace and flexibility and positivity. So 
you know, while we certainly want to honor and validate the actual losses that they are experiencing, let us not live in that place because that's a place of deficit and that comes from a lack mentality. So also starting with the parent, let us use our own strength-based narrative, a narrative that helps remind them of how spectacularly they are doing during this really, really unique time. And also as a family, really come together and think about the opportunities that you've been given during this time. I you know, sit with my friends sometimes and people will say, gosh, this was the hardest part of 2020, or this was the biggest challenge of 2020, or you know, once 2020 is over, but there's, there's also some real moments of you know, truth and reprioritization and grounding that have come with this time. And some people have said, it's actually made me very much think of what matters the most. And with so much being taken away, a lot of noise got turned down in life. And I realized that on the other side of this, I'm going to be more deliberate about what I bring back into my life. And I want you to be mindful of that as a parent too, is that when all of these things were taken off the plate, maybe the sports and the extracurriculars and some of the sleepovers and whatnot, did you find any sense of peace? Was there a moment of quietness in that? And if so, then let's be very deliberate architects about what variables we want to hold time and space for when our lives start more and more returning to or um, evolving to the next vision or the next version of normal. So I want to encourage parents, let's be deliberate. So point one is really go back to the foundational roots. Think about what it is that your family values. When you think about the three adjectives that you would like to have describe the human being that your child is, what are those three adjectives? Because I can tell you, I have seen a lot of kiddos who are restless and agitated and lonely and bored. And none of those are the adjectives that we as parents want for our children. So how do we create a garden around them despite um, certain external obstacles so that they can be fed in a way that helps them be curious or creative or empathic? So think about that and how to link it to experiences that are within our reach. For example, empathy is a big one. And so if I notice that I'm seeing a lot of boredom in my children, then maybe we take a moment and um, we have a kiddo in a tinawa that we sponsor and we say, well, let's think of Asen right now. Let's get creative. Maybe there's a card that we can make for him. Let's design something for him. Let's tell him what it's been like in the US during this time. Or if we are thinking about our neighbors and gosh, we really miss going across the street and seeing them and visiting with them and they're older and so it's not the safest thing to do right now. So what can we make for them or bake for them? So we really want to go back to the core values and find ways to link behavioral actions that support and encourage those core values. Creativity, for example, Okay, well, we're going to turn off the TV. We're going to put away the PlayStation remote control. What can we do instead? How do we build a fort? What do we need to make that happen? Um, how do we go outside and start just creating a garden? Why don't you turn the backyard into, you know, your own personal sanctuary? And how do you do that? But it's about being deliberate. The second step is utilizing this time as a rebalancing where you can be very, very precise and very intentional about how you build your life and your child's life on the other side of this. 
And, you know, the last piece that I'd really like to speak to is the fact that this is going to be different for every child. I've talked to parents where in one household, one child may be really introverted and their love of reading has just bloomed. And so their parents are just ordering books and have a Kindle and are trying to feed that because that's what their child needs. And then there is another child in that same household who's really craving social connectivity. So they've joined with a small group of families and potted together and created social opportunities so the kids can be together, but you know, in a safe um, and contained way. So assess what your child's need is and be deliberate about it proactively. Once we're in a place of reacting, we lose our ability to do anything super constructive. So if my child has already been on electronics going on hour three, and now I'm like, oh, where did the time go? How long have you been on there? You need to get off of that and do something else we're going in in more of this kind of shaking things up and frantic and agitated place as opposed to the night before we say okay we're gonna allow these things to be accessible during these times and let's brainstorm about options for activities that you can do independently during this pocket of time we want to set things up for success in advance because unfortunately once the train starts going down that path towards dysregulation it's very hard to turn that trajectory around so think and plan in advance have family meetings where you're really curious like what do you think your heart needs kiddo what is your heart craving right now what about your mind what is your mind craving right now are they being fed in a way that feels awesome? Or are you feeling like part of you is just kind of not getting enough? And be very creative about asking those questions, creating the time and space for them to share with you. No, I'm not getting enough of my friends and I miss them. Or I'm so bored. Or I wish I could just go running or jumping on a trampoline. But it requires conversations in advance. So I'd really like to focus in on those three points because it is quite a lot and it's gonna take time and creativity and constructive communication to figure out how to balance item one, two, and three in a way that's harmonious and authentic to your family in line with your family values. And let's be honest, also realistic, because we may want this, but we may only be able to deliver this. And that's okay, but we just really need to be deliberate and honest about what it is that we can manage. Otherwise, we're putting ourselves as parents in a state of deficit, where we're saying, I'm not doing enough. I wish I could do more. And that narrative for ourselves is just as negative and toxic as it is for our children. So again, those three points are point one, really understanding what are the seeds of your family values? What matters most? A quick exercise is the three adjectives that you would like and wish to be able to describe your child as that kind of helps inform those values. Part of that question is, have you as a parent overcompensated straight away from those values out of a sense of fear or guilt or frustration? And if you have, which I certainly have, then how do we get ourselves back to operating out of our values as opposed to operating out of guilt or a lack mentality? The second point is really changing our narrative and the narrative that we're presenting to the child, as opposed to, man, 2020 has just been such a rotten year and we've missed out on everything and it's been horrible for everyone to point out those moments because your kids are doing it. They're doing it every day. 
Like they're, they're logging on to something. Who would have thought a seven-year-old would log on to Zoom meetings? If you had asked me that two years ago, I'd be like, my seven-year-old wouldn't be able to, eight-year-old now wouldn't be able to navigate that independently. But yet here we are. And he logs on to PE and then he switches and he's like, oh, now I have homeroom. And I mean, my goodness, I'm blown away by that level of resilience and adaptability. So point two is change your narrative and change the narrative that you present to your child so that it's coming from strength because we really do have a chance to raise a generation of empathic, flexible, resilient, adaptive children. And that's the excitement and the grace that we should kind of bring into their days. The third piece is be very deliberate about what you're bringing back into life. So we had this very full blueprint, this very bustling and dynamic life that we were living. And then so much of it got wiped right off the table and we were left with just a few pieces. And in that, think about how much did we really need? What was noise versus what really held value and purpose? And talk to your child too about what it is that they need because it might be very different. Your one child might say, I feel so much better having extra time at home and I don't need to be in three sports. And the next child might say, I love my time at home, but I get so restless. I, I need to be physically active. I need to rejoin mountain bike club. I need to be on swim team. Um, but being curious about how to feed the needs of each specific child. It's funny, parents will sometimes across the board just say, okay, all the kids are gonna do this activity or all the kids are gonna be in this. But think about it from this lens. What if one of your children was anemic or one was diabetic or one was vegetarian? You would feed them and nourish and nurture them differently. And we can do that for our children emotionally and psychologically and behaviorally as well. And that's okay. Sometimes parents feel like it has to be even and equal and the same for each child. It doesn't need to be equal or even or the same because what each child needs is going to be different. And that's all right because they're each giving get what they need. So that's point three, is what do your kiddos need? How do you be deliberate about bringing those elements back and finding and holding space on the blueprint for those things and letting go of the noise? Just things that you're like, huh, it's no loss of joy that we don't do that anymore. Throw it out the window. We don't need to bring it back. All right, so those are the three points. You guys have some homework assignments. More than anything, I just wanna remind you that it's times of adversity that bring about the most character development. So utilize that mindset so we can get the best out of 2020. I'm gonna pause here so we can open it up to some questions.